Hi, Professor Mark. My name is Andrew. I'm a freshman. My student number is nineteen. And today I'm going to read a speech of Christine Sun Kim. The the enchanting music of sign language. Piano P is my favorite music musical symbol. It means to play softly. And if you're playing a musical instrument and you notice a P in the score, you need to play softer. Two P's even softer. Four P's extremely soft. This is my drawing. Drawing of a pea tree, which demonstrates no matter how many thousand, thousand pound, a thousand of pea there may be, you never reach complete silence. That's my current definition of silence, a very obs obscure sound. I'd like to share a little bit about the history of American Sign Language (ASL). Plus a bit of my own background, French sign French sign language was brought to America during the early 1800s, and as time went by, mixed with local signs, it evolved into the language we know today as ASL. So it has a history of about 200 years. I was born deaf, and I was taught to believe that sound was that wasn't a part of my life. And I believe it to be true. Yet I realize now that that wasn't the case at all. Sounds was very much a part of my life, really on my mind every day. As a deaf person living in the world of of sound, it's as if I was living in a foreign country, blindly following its rules, customs, behaviors, and norms without ever questioning them. So how is it that I understand sound? Well, I watch how people behave and respond to sound. You people are like are like my loudspeakers and amplify sound. I learn and mirror that behavior. At the same time, I've learned that create I create a sound, and I've seen how people respond to me. Thus, I've learned. For example, don't slam the door. Don't make too much noise with when you're eating from the potato chip bag. Don't burp, and when you're when you're eating, make sure you don't scrape your utensil on the on the plate. All of these things I term sound etiquette. Maybe I think about sound etiquette is more than the average hearing person does. I'm hyper vigilant sound around sound. And I'm always waiting in eager, nervous anticipation around sound, about what's to come next. Hence, this drawing, TBD, to be decided, TBC, to be continued, TBA, to be announced. And you notice the staff; there are no nails containing the lines. That's because lines already contain sound through the subtle smudges and smears. In deaf culture, movement is equal equivalent to sound. This is a sign of staff in ASL. A typical staff contains five lines. Yet for me, signing it with my thumb sticking up like that doesn't feel natural. That's why you'll notice in my drawings I stick four lines on paper. In the year two thousand eight and eight. I had the opportunity to travel to Berlin, Germany, for an art artist re residency there. Prior to this time, I had been working as a painter. During this summer, I visited different museums and gallery spaces. And as I went from one place to the next, I noticed there was no visual art there. At that time, sound was trending, and it struck me: there was no visual art; everything was auditory. Now, sound has come into my art territory. Is it going to further distance me from art? I realize that that doesn't have to be the case at all. 
I actually know sound. I know it so well that it doesn't have to be something just experienced through the years. It could be felt textually, or exper experienced as visual, or even as an idea. So I decided to reclaim ownership of sound and to put it into my art practice. And everything that I had been caught regarding sound, I decided to do away with and unlearn. I, st I started creating a new body of work. And when I presented this to the art community, I was blown away with the amount of support and attention I received. I realized sound is like money, power, control, social currency. In the back of my mind, I always felt that sound was your thing, a hearing person's thing. And sound is so powerful that it could either disempower me and my, my artwork, or it could empower me. I chose to be empowered. There is a massive culture around spoken language, and just because I don't use my, in my literal voice to communicate, in society's eyes, it's as if I don't have a voice at all. So I need to, I need to work with individuals who can support me as an equal and become my voice. And that way, I'm able to maintain relevancy in society today. So at school, at work and institutions, I work with many different ASL in interpreters. And their voice become my voice and identity. They help me to be heard. And their voices hold value and currency. Ironically, my, by borrowing out their voice, voices, I'm able to maintain a temporary form of currency. Kind of like taking out a loan with a very high interest, interest rate. If I don't... Con if I didn't continue this practice, I feel that I could just fade off into a believing and not maintain any form of social currency. So with that with sound as my as my new art medium, I delved into the world of music and I was surprised to see the similarity be, similarities between music and ASL. For example, a music a musical a musical note cannot be fully captured and expressed on paper. And the same holds true for a concept in ASL. They're both highly spatial and highly inflected. Meaning mean that subtle changes can affect the entire meaning of both both signs and sounds. I like to share with you a piano metaphor to have you have a better understanding of how ASO works. So envision a piano, a piano. ASO is broken down into many different grammatical parameters. If you assign a different parameter into uh, to each finger as you play the piano, such as facial expression, body movement, speed, and the sh hand shape, and so on. As you play the piano, English is a linear language, as if one key, one key is being pressed at a time. However, ASO is more like a chord. All ten fingers need to come down simultaneously to express a clear concept or idea in ASL. If just one of those keys were to change the chord, it would create a completely different meaning. The same applies to music in regards to pitch, tone, and volume. In ASL, by playing around with these different grammatical parameters, you can express a different ideas. For example, Take the sign, take the sign to to look at. 
This is the sign to look at. I'm looking at you, staring at you. Oh, busted. Oh no. What are you looking at? Oh, stop. I then started thinking what if I was to look at ASL through a musical lens? If I was to create it, create a sign and repeat it over and over, it could it could become like a piece of visual music. For for example, this is the sign of day. As the sun rises and sets, it's all day. If I was to repeat repeat it and slow it down, visually it looks like a piece of music all day. I feel the same holds true of all night. All night. This is all night. Re represented in this drawing, and this led me to think, thinking about three different kinds of night. Last night. Overnight. All night long. I feel like the third one has a lot more music musicality than the other two. This represents how time expressed in ASL and how the distance from your body can express the changes in time. For example, one H is one hand, two H is two hand. Present tense happens closest, clo closest and in front of the body. Future is is in front of body and the past is to your back. So the first example is a long time ago. Then past. Used to. And the last one, which is my favorite, with with an with a very romantic and dramatic notion to it. Once upon a time. Common time is a musical term with a specific time signature of four beats per measure. Yet when I, when I see the word common time, what automatically comes to mind for me is at the same time. So notice R H. Right hand L H. Left hand. We have the staff across the head and chest. I'm now going to demonstrate a hand shape called the flash claw. Can you please follow along with me? Everybody, hands up. Now we're going to do it both the the head and chest, kind of like common time or at the same time. Yes, got it. That means to fall in love in international. International. As a note, it is a visual tool to help communicate across cultures and in sign languages around the world. The second one I like to demonstrate is this. Please follow along with me again. And now this this is colonization in ASL. Now the third, please follow follow along again. And again. This is enlightenment, enlightenment in ASL. So let's do all three th together. Fall in love, col colonization, and enlightenment. Good job, everyone. Notice how all three signs are very similar. They are, they all happen at the the head and chest. But they convey quite different meanings, so it's amazing to see how ASL is alive and thriving, just like just like music is. However, in this day and age, we live in a very audio-centric world, and just because ASL has no sound to it, it automatically holds no social currency. We need to start thinking hard about. What defines so social currency and allow ASL to develop its own form of currency without sound? 
and this could possibly be a step to lead to a more inclusive society. And maybe people will understand that you don't need to be deaf to learn ASL, nor do do you have to be hearing to learn music. ASL is such a rich treasure that I like to, I like you to have the same experience, and I like. I'd like to invite you to open your ears, to open your eyes, take part in in our culture, and experience our visual language. And you'll never know; you might just fall in love with us. Thank you. Hey, that's me.